Philippe Cousteau Jr. is an Emmy-nominated host, author, and explorer. Cousteau is also the founder of President of and President of Earth Echo International, dedicated to inspiring youth to act now for a sustainable planet. Here to talk about the organization's water challenge is Philippe Cousteau Jr. Yay! Wow. Hi, everybody. We couldn't wait to get you out. We were playing that music early. We were like, get him out. And what an entree. I like the discussion. This yeah. Oh, really? Right really? Glad you me. liked yes. it. Yeah. Go from sex to Earth Day. I think yeah. it's, I think well, it's terrific. Yeah. important. That's Without sex, too. there'd be no humans to stay on Earth, and then Earth would probably get lonely, right? That's very true. Very <laughs> true. Sense? Connecting the dots. That's yeah. science. Great. I'm trying uh, That is hashtag science. I am the yeah. science specialist at Bill Drum. She is. I know. A lot of people don't know. So please tell us about Earth Echo International. Well, you know, Earth Echo is a is an organization that was inspired by my grandfather, who was Jacques Cousteau, who was a mm -hmm. filmmaker and explorer, and is really all about how do we help encourage and empower the youth movement. Because as we all know, you know, millennials, young people today, next gen, are really concerned about the environmental issues that are going on. We see it in the press all the time. Yeah. And the only way we're going to change it is if we get young people engaged in solving the problems. Because every real social movement that's been successful has been driven by young people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can you tell us about some of the programs you have to help do that? So we have education programs in classrooms all over the world. We have our, our program, the Earth Echo Water Challenge, is probably one of the largest citizen science water quality programs in the world. We all know about the water crisis. Yeah. Millions and millions of people don't have access to clean water. And as we've seen even in this country, places like Flint, you know, got a lot of the headlines a few years ago. There's a lot of people that, that drink contaminated water and don't even know it in this country. Right. So the program's all about how do we engage and empower people to go into their communities, test the quality of their water, and understand what's going on. Right. And what are some of the ways you get local communities to take the time to test their, 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 their water? So, you know, we work a lot with school groups, after school groups, religious organizations. There's a lot of corporate partners uh, like Baxter and Xylem and others that get their employees as volunteers out. Um, we, we are in actually 146 countries. We've had people participate in this program, one and a half million people around the world. So um, it's, uh, you know, once you get people outdoors and engaged, it's terrific. It's yeah. magic. You see what happens. Do you find it harder? I think I know the answer to this question. To get adults or millennials <laughs> more like inspired to take up this, this what, cause? You, say, you think? What do you think the answer? I think it's harder to get adults. You are one hundred percent correct. Our political climate. Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. We got. First of all, can we all, can we all just say we got to vote more? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. young people care about these issues. Yes. Um, and, and, and we wouldn't be in the current political climate if more young people would vote. It's, and it's for the first time ever becoming a leading issue in the democratic process that it never has been before. That That's right. There's some candidates yeah. that are like, uh, just using Inslee. climate change as yeah. like their platform. AOC, yeah. 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 Uh, so so yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Young people care mm -hmm. um, and they're engaged. They're just oftentimes looking for some encouragement, some tools, some suggestions of how they can get in to their communities. And so that's what we're really all about. Give them the tools and then get out of the way. Yeah. And I have some random question. I don't know if you saw it today. Uh, Lil Dicky released this like I Love Earth music video with like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, The Zebra. Have you seen it? I, you know what? I've been out of the country and I just got back last night. On but you heard of it. Yeah. I've heard of it. Um, you I'm like on the advisory board yeah. of the DiCaprio Foundation, which I know is involved in that. Right. So, uh, and Leo does terrific work with the environment. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm going to be uh, checking it out this afternoon. Do you sure. think pop culture movements like that actually do make a difference and help get people involved in movements such as yours? I do. I think it elevates kind of the issue for people because mm -hmm. it's a big issue. I mean, let's face it. We are facing some very real challenges when we come to oceans. We all hear about ocean plastic, fish mm -hmm. declining, our air quality, you know, water quality, climate change, all these things. Um, so we just, the more momentum we can build, the better. Right. Yeah. And how did you get inspired to love nature and environment? I know your grandfather is a food huge influence in your life, but how did that manifest in Earth Echo? Well, you know, toward, specifically towards the end of his life. So my grandfather, for people that don't know, Jacques Cousteau, he co-invented scuba diving mm -hmm. 20, 75 years ago this year, actually. Um, he did a series of documentaries all over the world. It was the first time people had ever kind of seen the oceans. We all grew up with Nemo and uh, Shamu and all this different stuff, right? <laughs> Free Willy. But uh, yes. For him, when he was our right, Jaws, exactly, unfortunately. unfortunately yeah, Jaws. that was a strike against him. Yeah, that was. <laughs> that's no, that's not one of my favorites. Respect the ocean and everything favorites. in it. <laughs> I like that positivity. Just angry because yeah. of all the plastic was <laughs> in there. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, he did a lot of documentaries because when he was little, nobody knew anything about the ocean, right? Um, so growing up with him, he really inspired me and taught me that young people are the key, as I said, to really any social movement. 
um, young people are, are the ones that drive change. And how does Earth Echo honor their legacy? Well, everything we do is focus on that message that, you know, we have a simple vision that my grandfather and father both used to say a lot, which is every single child deserves the right to breathe clean air, to drink clean water, to walk on green, healthy soil under a blue sky. And that's kind of the vision that drives us forward, and it's, it's right out of uh, his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure you have to get a little creative with how to keep people interested. And you have this new virtual reality project called Drop in the Ocean. Yeah, so we do. Actually, the last time I did AOL Build, we do a lot of documentaries and programs. We were talking about a travel series that we did with uh, Travel Channel mm -hmm. called Caribbean Pirate Treasure. We did two seasons of that with my wife, my wife and I, Ashlyn. And um, so we're always looking for new ways to reach people yeah. with kind of technology. Virtual reality is really exciting. Drop in the Ocean premieres this Thursday at Tribeca Interactive. Awesome. Wow. Um, That's really cool. And what it does is, is using technology. It shrinks people down. It's a shared group experience. Mm -hmm. Shrinks people down about an inch tall mm -hmm. equivalent. Puts you in the ocean so that plankton and all this stuff we take for granted. It's really small and we don't really know what it is and it's kind of out there in the ocean. Right. Uh, all of a sudden it's really big. Wow. And, um, this is an image at the end. It closes with a whale shark that eat plankton, actually. They're filter yeah. feeders coming and swallowing you up. But uh, <laughs> it's just a way to change the perspective for people to understand the oceans because yeah. the oceans still are getting uh, kind of short change. And days. to respect the ecosystem and how even the smallest thing has the biggest impact and has to be taken care of. Well, yeah. So, the circle uh, of life. Yeah. Two out of three breaths life that we kids. take, every single moment uh, of our lives comes from the ocean. Yeah. Right? So it yeah. uh, comes from plankton in the ocean. It doesn't come from trees. It doesn't come from the Amazon comes from the ocean. So yeah, circle life, kind of important breathing, oxygen, all stuff we're all fans of. Kind of need a healthy ocean to do that. And for our watchers, we always like to leave them feeling empowered. So what is maybe one thing we could do today to help with water and making sure that things are accessible and clean? Be informed. You know, we all have an incredible amount of knowledge on our fingertips. I would say be informed and allow that information to help encourage you. As I said earlier, I'm going to say it again, we're coming up on the election 2020 and not just federal, but local elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vote, please vote. Get engaged and vote on these issues. Please, yeah. God, vote. So please, yes. God, please. Vote. please, please, yeah. please, please. Make well, it clap for democracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You heard it. Vote. <laughs> please, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us.